Hey there and welcome to Consult the Blind Guy. My name is Andrew and in today's episode we're discussing blogs. Free blogs versus paid blogs. Where you may want to be able to start a blog and some of the details that go into each of the different sites, the pros and the cons. If you're new here, thanks for watching. If you're a member of the consulting crew, welcome back. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Let's get to it. As I said, welcome to the show. My name is Andrew, and I'm here to help you build your brand, grow your audience, market your content, and make money. In today's episode, we're going to discuss some of the different platforms you can use to be able to start a blog. Some of these are free, some of them are paid. We're going to cover the pros and the cons. So let's get into it. What exactly is a blog? A blog is something that you can do on many different platforms of sharing your personal thoughts, opinions, or experiences with an audience. It can also be kind of seen as journaling, but with more of a particular reason behind it of getting others to read it rather than it being just something personal that you keep for yourself. This allows you to share your knowledge and experience with cooking or disability in many cases for our community or your experience with going to college, having a particular type of job, working with tech, dieting, exercising, dealing with depression and anxiety, and so, so much more. There is pretty much a blog on just about every topic under the sun, including topics of the sun. So, what are some of the different platforms that you can use to be able to start a blog? I've gone through and done some research on the different platforms that are out there. WordPress.com versus WordPress.org, Blogger.com, Tumblr, Weebly, Joomla, Squarespace, and many, many others. And I've narrowed them down to just a few of them that are actually 100% free and then there are some that are paid and the reason i did it this way is because i wanted to be able to give you the option of something that allows you to go for free and be able to get started now with as little expense as possible and then i went as far as to go into the other ones to give you those options to have total freedom of what it is that you want to do if you're new here please feel free to join us in the consulting crew by hitting that subscribe and bell icon so you can stay updated on the latest videos live streams and more and check us out on facebook we have a nice community there of members that are sighted as well as visually impaired and legally blind or totally blind and we discuss many different things there within the community group some of which we do talk about here on the channel but we go a little bit more one-on-one -on -one and in depth there as well so first up we have wordpress.com WordPress does allow you to have a free blog and it's fairly simple to set up. The downside is, is with all the updates that get done, it was an accessibility featured 
platform, but the more updates get done, the more that accessibility seems to be going away. Now, I'm sure that they're going to be implementing those same features back into it, but time will tell. One of the downfalls to WordPress.com is when you create your account for your blog, your domain name is always going to be a subdomain of WordPress. Instead of having, we'll say, for instance, hypothetically, consultablindguyblog.com or something to that effect, it is going to be a WordPress.com slash whatever your blog name is. Unfortunately, it's nice to be able to have that ability to have a free account. It's a downfall to where it is always going to be a subdomain. Another downfall is you cannot remove the WordPress branding or the ad. When you do your blog, you are limited to three gigabytes of storage on your blog. So we'll say that you have a hundred different blog posts. As long as they're under three gigabytes, you're good to go. But the instant that you reach that three gigabyte threshold, you're going to start losing some of those blog posts. So if you are going to use WordPress, make sure that you keep a copy for yourself. That way you will never lose them because once you reach that threshold, you are going to start seeing some of your older blog posts disappear. Another downfall to having WordPress.com as your free blog site is you cannot monetize. Sorry, but because they run their own ads with on that platform, that means you are not able to get a Google AdSense and be able to do your own advertising to monetize your blog. You might be able to do an affiliate link here or there, but you're not going to be able to get as much revenue through that blog because you're only going to be limited to the ability of sending them from your blog to something else to be able to monetize that way. Whether it's a affiliate link to Amazon or some other product or service or a Teespring merch store or something to that effect. You're not able to make as much because you don't have your own AdSense ads going onto that blog to where if you've got a hundred to a thousand different people, we'll say, that are going to your blog, all that revenue for the AdSense, for the views, is going to WordPress instead of you. Another downfall to the WordPress.com is you do not get any plugins or alternate themes by default. You don't get anything. Unfortunately, that's just not cool in my opinion because there are many plugins that would make the site more accessible. It would be able to give you more analytics and different features that you might want to use. And then you can't change the overall look or layout of how the blog is. Next is blogger.com. Blogger is the former blogspot.com. It was bought out by Google and they changed the name. Some of the pros of blogger.com. One being stability. Blogger.com has been around for years and with Google buying the platform and having their support team, there is a lot more stability on that platform now because it has been around for so long. And with that being said, that means it's also very secure. Now, I'm not saying that it's 100% hacker proof or anything like that but it is a lot safer than some of the other sites out there that are potentially vulnerable to having issues 
another pro to blogger.com is the ability to monetize by using the Google AdSense, which is able to integrate very, very easily. Of course it is because, you know, Google owns it. So Google's going to make sure that their tools and their systems all integrate fairly easily. Another benefit is simplicity. It's very simple to get started with, even for beginners and that is always a plus easy layouts easy to understand setups for being able to get things going is always a plus no matter what platform it is now some of the cons of blogger unfortunately there is no real major customization you get what you see in that is it it's also a little bit difficult from what i found to be able to set up your domain name to be customized another downfall is the lack of themes and customization to really make it its own there's no plugins to be able to give you extra features or anything like that just like with the wordpress dot com blogs as well another con for blogger is the lack of support unlike wordpress there is not much of a community support or a customer support and there is very rarely any updates to the features done whereas with wordpress they are constantly working on things and unfortunately when i say wordpress is constantly working on things i mean they are constantly working on things i myself on my website that i have it is every single day that i am practically getting an email that wordpress has updated something and just so you are aware my website is one of those that is paid for and not a free one. So it's pretty much the same whether you're on WordPress.com or WordPress.org. They are constantly updating it every day, every other day, every couple days. And to me, it gets a little bit annoying, but at the same time, it's a good thing because the more they update it, the more features you may get, the more vulnerabilities they're fixing, the more accessibility features they might be bringing back or fine tuning and things of that nature. Now, when it comes to the bottom line of everything, Blogger is a good blogging site if you're just a casual blogger you can have a blog set up within 15 minutes and ready to go and downfall to this though is if you choose to down the road per se switch from blogger.com to a wordpress site it is going to be a royal pain in the ass and that brings us to the next option which is wix Dot com. Some of the pros of Wix. One, it's free. It's fairly simple to use for the most part. It does take some getting used to, but in this day and age, what doesn't take a little bit of time to figure it out how everything works and get used to the structure and layout of the dashboard for creating designing and writing your text out it is a drag and drop system but that drag and drop can take a minute to get used to i myself started out with a wix blog a few years ago and it took me a good couple weeks to really get familiar with where everything was and how to set everything up it did take a little bit of tweaking and experimenting to finally get everything started don't get discouraged and just quit take a little bit of time each week or depending on how much free time you have 
take an hour a day or whatever you feel like spending and play with it. Figure it out. That way you can make it easier on yourself as you go forward. As I said, Wix has a free option. And with Wix, it's just like with the others that I've mentioned a moment ago. And it is a subdomain. Of course, you can upgrade and pay for it. And you can get your own domain. But just to start out for free, it's not a bad platform to start off with either. By doing this on the free platform, you're pretty much testing it out before you have to upgrade to a paid plan. Not that you're going to get forced into paying for a website through them. It is a good way to get started. By using the free plan, it does not give you the ability to have your own custom domain until you pay for it which also means that it requires you to run their ads on your site, just like WordPress as well. They do have some great templates. Packages come loaded with pre-built templates, giving you time and letting you focus on your business or your hobby, depending on how you look at it. Another bonus to Wix is they do automatic website backups of your blog. That way, if anything happens, you can just go right back and pick the restore point you want to go to. Now, for some of the cons of Wix, it may be fairly easy to use, but it comes at a price. The cheapest ad-free website is going to be $14 a month. Next is the functionality. Now they have some great templates to start out with, but to customize them further, it is a little bit more complicated and it's going to start costing you. And the reason I say this is because if you don't want to deal with the lack of flexibility with the templates, then you might as well just go with a hosted WordPress website, which is a paid website. Another downfall is the speed of the blogs. Now, it's not that they're super slow, but they're not super fast. They could improve on it, but they've got a lot of people that are either paid or on the free plan. And depending on how much you have on the site, depends on how quick or how slow it may actually load. Comes down to the bottom line, Wix is one of the best low to no cost blog sites out there. It may not be the top of the line, best of the best hosting platforms for a blog, but for being a no cost or a very low cost, platform, it is good enough to get started with to be able to get started from scratch. There are many companies out there that start out with the free account and then upgrade as they gain more momentum and they continue to use the platform just because it is fairly well set up. Now, you're probably going to laugh a little bit on the next couple, but I had to add these in there for the ability to really give you the free option. And this one, you may not think of it that way or may not like the platform all that well, but it is entirely a possibility that you should consider. Facebook.com. Facebook is an entirely free platform. You can have your own personal profile and you can also make a page or a business page as many people call them these days. You also have the ability to start groups and do a lot on the platform. The pros is, as I said a second ago, it's free. 
you can create a page and you can start blogging within minutes. You get analytics to be able to see what is going on for traffic and engagement on your page. And you have the ability to interact with your followers compared to a lot of the other blogs, which don't give you a whole lot of capability of interacting with your viewers. You can see if they like it, they don't like it. If they laughed at a joke, you can get them to interact and engage with you on that page. Other than the no cost aspect, you have the ability to reach many people, not only locally, nationally, but also internationally. Facebook is a global platform and it is for the most part fairly easy to use it like any other website out there does take a little bit of time to get used to the layout of how they have everything set up and it is constantly evolving now when it comes to the cons unfortunately there are a lot of community guidelines and you are restricted on the way that you post on your platforms when it comes to your blog on Facebook. They have a very strict set of guidelines and if you do not abide by them, they will take away your ability to post or interact or comment anywhere between 24 hours in 30 days and depending on the context of your post you could potentially get banned from the platform not only from the pages section but your entire facebook account including your personal account so in that sense the lack of freedom of speech is a bit of concern but depending on what you are blogging about, you really don't have too much to worry about. Now, if you're going to go on a rant, kind of like I do periodically here on this channel, you will know that you do that on Facebook and you run a real risk of losing your page or your profile and getting banned from the platform. And then just like many of the other platforms, there is no fully customized domain name. It is always going to be a subdomain. For example, facebook.com slash your blog. In order for you to have that ability to have a subdomain, you must have at least 100 followers. The next one, is probably another shocker, but I still had to add this into the list because it is a potential place for you to do it. And that is twitter.com. Twitter does give you the ability to reach many people, whether it's nationally or internationally. You have the ability to do affiliate links, and you also have the ability to do live streams and everything else on Twitter. Now, one of the downfalls is that just like on Facebook, you do have a lot of guidelines that you must stay within when it comes to what you're saying on the platform because they too will close down your account if they feel that you are violating their terms of service or community guidelines with the context of your post. Another downfall is that you're limited on the amount you can post. Your characters or your text is limited to somewhere around 200 words maximum or something around those lines. So you don't get a whole lot of space to put in there but if you do it in small chunks, you can make one fairly large blog post into a couple different posts and you can create engagement that way as well. 
the pros is it's free you can reach multiple people and you have other features like the hashtags the ability to do the live streams the ability to do the new uh audio version that you're doing which is similar to doing kind of like clubhouse another downfall is just like the others is there is no custom domain name it's going to be twitter.com slash whatever you name your account and then again you're also limited on the monetization capabilities you're not going to be able to run google adsense or anything like that you can post like an affiliate link to a landing page that you own if you're doing something like that but they have their own guidelines on the type of links that you can share and now for the paid options now i'm not going to give you a whole lot on these for the aspects of pros and cons because there are a lot of them between all of the different sites but these are some potential places that you might be interested in checking out in determining whether or not they are a fit for you some of them have more restrictions than others but that is way too many to be listing throughout this video i would literally be sitting here for a couple of hours listing all of the different pros and cons to each of these different platforms so I have narrowed it down just a little bit at the end of this small list to the paid platforms. Some of these paid platforms include WordPress.org, Squarespace.com, Bluehost.com, Tumblr.com, Joomla.com, and so on there are plenty of hosting sites out there for you to be able to start a website as i said if we were to go through the pros and cons of each of these that i've just listed off and all the other many platforms out there for website hosting or blog hosting we would be here for hours all of these sites have varying prices and capabilities restrictions on domain names, lack of customer service or expensive customer service as part of their packages, as well as varying levels of difficulty in creating your site and so on. Some of these include having the lack of customer service for example is where you would go on you would pay them we'll say the cheapest one is bluehost at approximately on their cheapest plan 295 a month for the platform plus the wordpress hosting and everything else it comes to about 111 dollars a year which isn't entirely all that bad if you really think about it because then you have the full capability of customizing and setting up everything and i mean everything the way you want it not the way that the other platforms tell you here you go this is what you get now deal with it there are a couple of those sites that have the ability for customer service but it is not the best customer service a couple of them only allow you access to the frequently asked questions a couple of them allow you the ability to go to a community help center or a knowledge base and you will be able to get answers from other users of that platform and then you have another one where it will actually charge you to have 
access to a phone or online support team at your expense. I don't like those ideas. That's one reason that I myself have Bluehost as my website host because they have a 24 seven customer support team. You have the ability to go to the knowledge base, a frequently asked questions as well as directly call or online chat with a support member. I myself have one of the higher tiered websites rather than the cheapest of the platform. But that's because I wanted more features for mine and the ability to do more websites other than just one. Currently only have one, but I have the ability to do more than one at a fairly discounted rate compared to doing one for $111 for each individual website. So I hope that this has helped you out with a little bit of the pros and cons of the different platforms that you can use for a blog site. If you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to drop your questions down below in the comment section. I have no problems helping. You can also join me on the live q a on mondays i have no problem answering your questions there either we usually do a live q a on the same day that this video is released and then i do a q a every week with all the other videos and you are more than welcome to join us on one of them and ask your questions there as well so I'd like to invite you once again to join us in the consulting crew on Facebook. We have an awesome community there to where you can interact one on one with me as well as the other community members. And if you would like, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can stay updated on the latest videos, live streams and more. It would also be awesome to see you within the Creators Guild, which is hosted by Impartial Geek. We have a awesome community there as well of many content creators of various levels. If you're interested, check out the Creators Guild dot app. You might also be interested in the Creator Toolkit. Dot com. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you have a good day, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are, and enjoy the weather. And we will see you in the next live Q&A and episode. Have a good one.